<clears throat> so remember that we have already seen a lot of uh, uh, array methods which are basically a uh, basic formats of uh, array methods that we saw but now we are going to see a much more complex array methods which are of very importance okay now let's one of them is for each now what is this for each method does uh, i mean array method does this for each array method calls a function for each element in an array accepts a callback function so here is what we are going to see how the callback function is passed as an argument okay so this is for each is again a function this function is having a parameter called callback function and this function is again in term you can make it as an arrow function and use it let's see this how this for each function uh, for each array method works okay let's go ahead and take this example let's say uh, what for each says calls a function for each element in an array accepts a callback function now let's let's go ahead and see what it does now suppose i create a constant called let's say digits okay some digits i'm going to create and this will be an array mm, let's say it starts from one two three four five six seven eight nine let's say these are the uh, digits that i have taken this is a simple array <clears throat> Now this array, on this array, I am going to use what is known as for each method. And as you know, for each method takes a callback function as an argument. Now, what is that callback function that I want to provide it to it? Now, let's say this function can be, uh, let's say, there's a function. And this function accepts the parameter called uh, digits, which is nothing but some parameter or let's say number symbol. And this has, the, because this is a function, it has an open and close uh, parenthesis. And this parenthesis, let's say, I want to only select a even number. So whenever I select an even number, what is the uh, thing that I need to make? Like, for example, let's say if whatever the number that I am entering, mod of that number, okay, mod of that number with 2, if this is equal to 0. So whenever I take a number one mod of two, it is not equal to zero. If it is two, two mod two will be equal to zero. Hence two will be even number. It goes to three, three uh, mod two will be equal to one. So it is not equal to zero. So it will only select this mod number mod two will actually be the even number if it is equal to zero. So this is what the condition that I'm checking. And inside this, let's say I'm adding, uh, let, let's say I'm going to print something. Okay. So console.log, I'm going to print. And let's say I'm going to print digits, whatever the value that I have selected or some kind of a a number that I'm going to print. Simple. So what it contains, so arrow, this is digits is nothing but an array. And what you see here is an array method, which is for each. So I have this function inside as a parameter, which is nothing but a callback function, which means for each element of an array, this function is going to execute. All right, this function is going to execute for each element of an array. That is what this will do. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, sorry. I don't know why I have added this. Okay. If you understand this, uh, what it contains, it has for each element of an array, it is going to check and execute this particular 
um, what is this? This particular uh, uh, callback function for each element. For, so whenever it takes first element one, one is not uh, even because the mod is equal is not equal to zero. So this is not printed. If it goes to two, second element will be picked. It is uh, even. Hence two will be printed. Four will be printed. Five will be printed. Six will be printed. So what for each method will do is it will execute for each element of an array this callback function. All right. So next is another thing. What we have is a map method. Map is again a, a array method. What it does, it will create a new array from a calling function. So whatever the calling function as a parameter we are going to give and for every array element, okay, it is going to create a new array from a calling method and calls the function once for each element in an array, like the way what we saw in uh, the for each as well. For every element, the method is going to get executed. So let's, let's take the same thing for that matter, okay? Uh, let's say I'm going to take that and instead of this, I'm going to, uh, let's say, map, map, and then I'm going to have this uh, function, I'm going to map it. Let's say instead of this, I'm just going to, uh, yeah, let me remove this, open and close. This is the function. I'm going to get the number and this number, again, I'm going to return what? Uh, let's say return num into num, okay? So basically I'm squaring it. Whatever the number I have got, I'm trying to square it. So if you observe this guys, so, uh, what is that digits? If I say digits, my original array was containing one to nine. Okay. This was my original array. Now what map function will do is for each element of an array, for each element of this array, this particular function will be executed. Okay. So what, what it is doing is it is executing this particular function for each element of an array. Okay, so for first one, it will take what it will do num into num, the, the element will be passed to the function and that will return num into num, which is one into one, one will be there. Then again, two will be picked, two into two, four will be there, three into three, uh, uh, nine is there. So, so it is actually squaring the each element of an array and creating a new array. Okay, that is the catch here. Map will always create a new array. Again, this the same thing that I can go ahead and put that into an arrow function as well, guys. This is again an interesting thing. I can go ahead and say num uh, is equal to arrow function. And this I don't need arrow, nothing written. I don't need, I don't need the open and close parenthesis. So what you can do is instead of writing this entire function, I can just convert that into an arrow function which means arrow function is what taking the parameters and multiplying whatever it is returned if it is a single statement because num into num is a single return statement i don't even need to write the uh, function keyword and return keyword very simple i can just say num uh, arrow function which is returning the square and that is what you are seeing here all right so now again there is a, another array method which is known as filter again this also will create a new array so what it does is it will create a new array filled with elements that pass a test. So what test, where is this test is going to be conducted? This test is conducted by the callback function. So whatever the function is, if it is passed, passed means it returns the value true. If it is true only then that element will be added. Like for example, let's say I have this, okay. Now, instead of map, I'm going to say filter, filter method and filter method is going to take what it is going to take a certain uh, test. So how is the text test is going to be test should return either true or false. For that, I need to use some logical operator. So for that, what I will do, I'll say uh, a number will be passed to it and this number will return what? Let's say I want to only select those numbers which are less than six. 
okay so number is less than six so what it is doing guys now the filter method is actually taking this callback function and this callback function will return true or false means if if it is true then only that element is added to the new array like for example i have taken the number all these numbers are there uh, element numbers are there first number is taken one one is less than six which is true and hence one is added two is less than six two is added three is less than six again three is added four is added five is added the moment it comes to six six is less than six which is false hence it is not added to the new array seven is not added eight is not added nine is not added so what we are seeing in the filter array method is it is also going to create a new array but it will check for the past test so it should return a true value for that calling function whatever we are going to use in the filter method okay with that being said let's understand what does the next array method called find will do find is again returns a value of the first element that passes the test only the first element okay if there are 10 elements out of this four passes the test you are going to take only the first element that is passing the test okay the method returns unidentified if no elements are passed passing that test so now let's take the same thing let's say <coughs> you are going to take this particular thing so what method we are going to use find method okay if i am going to enter find so what it is saying it is going to find all the number uh, the, the first very first number in the array which is passing this test number is less than six which is the very first element is passing hence it is going to return the very first element now in the same case if i'm going to say the number is greater than nine so out of this array which is the array method the, for this array which is digits which is nothing but one to nine elements it contains none of the numbers are greater than nine because all the numbers are less than or equal to nine hence it is giving me undefined okay so this is what it is method returns undefined if no elements are found all right this is again a very interesting method that is going to be used a lot of times which is known as find method <coughs> and the next is called a reduce method again what it says as the name suggests there is something that it is executes a reducer function for array methods or array elements and returns a single value which is nothing but a function's accumulated result like for example um, if you are going to use this uh, reducer function most of the times when you want to find the sum okay uh, if you want to find the sum of all the elements in an array, this is very good way. Okay, that is uh, obviously going to reduce your function, um, I mean, uh, value into a smaller value. So let's let's say this. Executes a reducer function for an array element and returns a single element, which is nothing but accumulated value. Let's take it. Let's say there is digits, which is an array that we are using. So digits dot reduce and this reduce method will take two parameters. Okay. One is the accumulator, which is nothing but a callback function if you are going to use, which is fine. And then you are going to use uh, what is known as some kind of a callback function. Let's say. Um, let's say what callback function i'm going to use let's say i'm taking the number and this number i'm going to use as a parameter that i'm going to pass and this parameter uh, let's say the very first is sum okay i'm going to use sum comma the number there are two parameters i'm going to use one is an accumulator and another is a number and that is passed to the arrow function as a parameters and this parameter will do what uh, sum plus num 
okay i'm i'm summing it up okay what i'm trying to do one is a sum and another is the number which means i'm passing the first element one so this will be holding the value i can also define the uh, initialization value for this as well what is the initial value i want to take I, I'll, I'll talk about that in a bit but for now understand that like for example if i have this i can go ahead and use uh, 10 so what it will do it will be the initial value of the sum now initial value of the sum let's talk it take it as zero because that is what the default is now let's understand this what is happening here <clears throat> So, guys, the reducer function, right, it will take two parameters, okay. The second parameter is also optional. The first parameter is this one, which is nothing but a calling function, callback function, okay. What it contains, it contains the sum, which is nothing but an accumulator and the initial and the value of the element. So, the first element will be passed to the num, which is one here, and the sum will be the accumulator because of this operation this will whatever the operation you are doing that value is accumulated in the sum like number one is taken and number one plus the uh, plus the sum sum value initial value is set to zero zero plus one will be one so sum will hold the value one in the first equation what will happen is if i if i want to trace this guys let's say so initially sum will be initialized to zero because this is the parameter which is going to initialize the accumulator value initial value and then the first number is num is equal to one this is what and the resultant will be this plus this so hence sum which is the accumulator is holding the value one and it will take, go to the next element then the sum is currently holding the value one but num is also holding the value 2 now. So 2 plus 1, the sum will be 3. Okay. Then again, it will go to the next. Now sum is holding the value 3 from the last iteration. Now what will happen? Next element will be picked. Next element is what? 3. So 3 will be picked. 3, then it is equal to 3 plus this 3. 3 plus 3 is equal to sum will hold the value 6 okay. and then the sum is holding the value 6 because of the last iteration then it is going to take num value 4 which is the next element in the uh, array so it is going to take what 6 plus this one will be equal to sum will now become 10 okay so and so forth it is going to add each value and the final value will be 10 Okay, that is how you are going to use the reducer function. It is reduced whenever you want to sum it, multiply it, whatever the operation you want to do it here, it will give the resultant value in the, uh, the first uh, argument of your callback function. Now, as you know, this will be the initial value of the accumulator. Now, suppose you want to add the sum, you want to start it from 10. 10 plus 45 is 55. Let's say I have this function instead of 0 I want to make it 10 so it is going to give the value 45 because sum is initially starting at the value 10 10 plus 10 plus 1 it will be give, give 11 then 11 plus 2 will be 13 that is how the initial value is set okay so understood guys how this works reducer function yes sir yes all right the last uh, again uh, function that we are going to talk about is sum so what this method is checks if any array element pass a test provided by the callback function obviously and returns true and stops okay if it finds pass the test returns true and stops if the function returns true for the one of the elements if it is not uh, if you you find any element that passes it it is going to return true like for example uh, let's say i have this function okay this function then i'm going to say 
num. What is that sum? Now, what is happening here? <clears throat> In the digits array, are there any numbers which are greater than 9? It will go all the way through to here. There is nothing, there is no number that is greater than 9. Hence, it is going to return false. If I say number great, less than 9, yes, there are elements in the array which are passing this test. What test? The test that is given by the callback function, which is number is less than 9. Yes, there are elements. So that is what it is going to return. So always sum is kind of a Boolean method. It is going to return true or false. If the uh, if the array passes that test given in the callback function, if it passes, then it is true. Uh, if it fails, then it is false. Okay, that is what uh, sum method will do. All right, guys, I think uh, that is good enough now. And again, in the sum, there is another I think, yeah, every, like just the way opposite to it. Every means method exists, executes a function for each element and array, returns true if the function returns true for all the elements, okay, which means all the elements should pass the test. Here only if sum, if one of the element passes this test also, it will return true. Whereas in every what will happen every element should pass here what will happen num is less than 9 so 9 is not less than 9 only one of the element is failing this hence it is giving the value false had it been num is less than 10 then it would have given true value because every element of this array called digit is less than 10 that is the reason it is uh, giving the value true okay so this is how the some of the array methods that you saw which uses the callback function as an argument and this callback function can be put into a arrow function format in a very shortcut format so that you this can be utilized.